Welcome to another episode of Fort Bend Mathematics Tutoring. Take a moment to soothe your nerves. Remember, these is just numbers. They can't hurt nobody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about scientific notation. That's right. In this lesson today, we'll be focusing on converting standard notation, that's the way you would normally see numbers, into scientific notation and vice versa. That's right, taking something that's already in scientific notation and writing it back into standard notation. In addition to that, we will also take a look at operations with scientific notation. So, you're going to get a three for one deal with this video. So, for starters, this is the form of scientific notation. That's right, that capital M there is going to be a number from from 1 to 10, including 1, not including 10, and you'll have 10 raised to an integer. That's right, raised to an exponent, whether it be negative or positive. So this is going to be the form that you have for scientific notation, and this notation is made up of two factors. That's right, once again, that value of m is going to be a number between 1 and 10, including 1, and m will be expressed in decimal notation. Yep. The value of n is going to be an integer. That's right. No fractions, no decimals, just an exponent that may be negative or positive. And if you find your problem in the form of 10 to the nth power, that is acceptable as scientific notation when the value of m is equivalent to 1. So these are the forms that we'll be referring to, and we're going to start with the first problem. Here we go. In problem number one, we have 2,500. So the first thing you should always identify in every scientific notation problem is where the decimal currently lies. In other words, where is the decimal? So if you're having difficulty finding the decimal in a problem, always look at the number as though it's money. So if this was money, the decimal would be right behind that last zero, right? So your next step is to place this decimal behind the first significant digit, the first number that's not a zero when looking at the the problem from left to right. So the first value I have is 2 and since that value is not a 0 I want to place this decimal at the end behind the number 2. So we'll move the decimal over 1, 2, 3 places so that I can rewrite it as 2 and 5 tenths. All right, so what we just did was move the decimal one, two, three places to the left, and what you're going to write next as the second factor is a map back to standard notation. The next thing you'll do is tell the reader in how many places and in what direction you need to move the decimal in order to write the answer back in standard notation. So I want to tell the reader that since they're now seeing it as two and five tenths, in order to write this number back in standard notation, they need to move the decimal three places to the right. And there's your result. So my answer in standard notation is 2 and 5 tenths times 10 to the third power, and that's it. Let's red box it. So red boxing my answer. All right. So the way I always look at the exponent on my base of 10 is I'm always writing that number as a map back to standard notation. All right. I'm telling the reader, I'm telling my audience, whoever's looking at this paper, hey, in order to write this back in standard notation, you need to move that decimal three places to the right, just like that. All right, let's look at our next problem. In problem number two, we have 315 and 4 tenths. In this problem, we already see that the decimal lies between the 5 and the 4. However, we want to place this decimal behind the first number we see that's not a 0, reading the problem from left to right. So that would be this number 3. So in order to move that decimal over, I would need to first move it to the left, and I'd need to move it over one, two places. And this now gives me 3 and 154 thousandths times my base 10 raised to the power of 2 because I'm telling the reader in order to write this number back in standard notation, they need to move this decimal two places to the right. So that's how we end up with 3 and 154 thousandths times 10 squared as our answer in scientific notation. And now it's time to box up your result. So here we go, boxing it up red box in it. All right, that was problem number two. Moving on to problem number three. All right, and problem number three here, we have 234 ten thousands. That's right, 234 ten thousands. 
I want to write this in scientific notation. My decimal is currently to the left of the zero here, but I want to place it behind the first number that's not a zero. So reading the digits from left to right, the first digit I have is zero, the second digit I have is two, and the number two is the first digit that we have that's not a zero. So I'll be placing this decimal behind the two and rewriting this as two and 34 hundredths times my base 10, and then I need to write the exponent that tells the reader where to put the decimal in order to write it back in standard notation. So since I moved the decimal originally two places to the right, I need to tell the reader in order to write the decimal back in standard notation, you need to move that decimal two places to the left. So that's how we end up with a negative exponent in our answer for scientific notation. So we end up with two and 34 hundredths times 10 to the negative two power. And once again, my exponent is a map back to standard notation, the way you would normally see the problem. So originally we had the 234 ten thousandths where our decimal was to the left of the zero. In order to write our answer back in standard notation, you would need to move this decimal between the two and the three, two places to the left, in order to write your answer in standard notation. So once again, this is our answer. Done. Red boxing it. There we go. That's problem number three. Moving on to problem number four. All right, here we are. In problem number four, we have 5,600 thousands, 5,600 thousands. And I need to place this decimal behind the first number that's not a zero. And what number would that be? Remember, we're supposed to be looking at this from left to right. So the first digit you see that's not a zero is what? Say it again, you're gonna have to speak a little louder. Exactly, it's the five. You need to place this decimal behind the five, so let's do just that. So I'll be moving the decimal in one, two, three, and four places to the right to end up with five and six tenths times my base 10 raised to the negative fourth power. That's right, since I originally moved that decimal four places to the right, I'm telling the reader to write it back in standard notation. You need to move that decimal four places to the left. And there you have it, red boxing it. Like to put my answers in the box, done. Let's move on to the next problem. All right, here we have problem number five with the number 40,504. So the first thing we need to do is locate the decimal. Remember, if you don't see the decimal, it'll be to the right of your last digit. So the decimal lies right behind that four. And I need to move the decimal behind the first number, reading it from left to right, that's not a zero. So looking at my first digit in the number, the number four is not a zero. Therefore, I need to place my decimal behind this four. So let's go ahead and move it one, two, Two, three, four places to the left, and I end up with four and 504 ten thousandths times my base 10, and I need to tell the reader to move the decimal how many places to the right? You got it, four places to the right to write it back the way it was, so you end up with four and 504 ten thousandths times 10 to the fourth power, and done. Red boxing it. Putting a box around my answer, all right? That's what's up. That's problem number five, and let's move on to the next problem. In problem number six, we have the next problem here, which is 50 and 34 thousandths, and we wanna write this in scientific notation. So we wanna place the decimal behind which number? Say it again. What's that that you say? The five? That's right. You need to place the decimal behind the five. That's right. That first number, reading it from left to right, that's not a zero. So let's move that decimal one place to the left, and I'll be rewriting this as five and 34 ten thousandths times 10 to the first power. 10 to the first power. That's right. I would only need to move that decimal one place to the right. And since we're simplifying this because you don't have to show that exponent of one, you can write your result as five and 34 ten thousandths times 10. That's it. That's in scientific notation. I'm putting a red box around my answer and done. That's problem number six and moving on to the next problem. That's right, we're in problem number seven now and we're going to write our answers in standard notation. So we're given scientific notation and they're asking you to write the number as you would normally see it. So remember our exponents on our basis of 10 are maps back to standard notation. They're telling you exactly what to do to the decimal in order to write it the way you would normally see it. 
all right so I know I start with the number two and I move the decimal three places to the right so since I have a positive three that's going to be a positive movement to the right and if I had a negative exponent I would be moving the decimal to the left so since I have a positive three in this problem I'm going to take my decimal that would lie right behind that two and move it three places to the right so I'm going to move it over one two three places to the right and within each of these little divots here these little valleys I'm going to place a zero. That's right. So I end up with a final answer of 2000. That's it. I'm going to put a box around this now because it's done. All right. So 2000 is the answer. That was problem number seven. And now I'm going to move on to the next problem. Problem number eight, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. We have seven and two tenths times 10 to the negative two power. I know I'll be starting out with this seven and two tenths. However, my exponent tells me to move the decimal two places to the left. So since the base has a negative exponent on it, that tells me to move that decimal two places to the left. And that's exactly what I'll do. So I'm going to move the decimal over one, two places to the left. I'm going to show the decimal here. And I'm going to also place a zero in that little cup right there. So I can write this as 72 thousandths and done. That's the answer. Red boxing it. There it is. That's problem number eight, ladies and gentlemen. So keep in mind that we're writing our answer in standard notation and you simply follow the directions of your exponent. It tells you negative two, so I move it to the left two places. If it would have been a positive value, a positive exponent, I would have moved it two places to the right if it was a positive two. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Working nine to five. That's right. Working on problem number nine. We have six and 27 hundredths times 10 to the negative first power. This map here, that exponent is telling me to move the decimal one place to the left. And that's exactly what I'll do. That's right. So I'm going to start off with my initial factor of six and 27 hundredths and then move this decimal one place to the left. All right. So that's right. It's going to be a result of 627 thousandths and done. That's the answer. Yeah. Not bad, huh? What'd you think? Not bad at all. Let's look at problem number 10 next. In problem number 10, we have 1 and 5 hundredths times 10 to the fourth power. That means we need to take our first factor, which is 1 and 5 hundredths, and move the decimal four places to the right. So I'm going to take it over 1, 2, 3, 4 places to the right, and I'm going to fill in those little spaces with zeros here. And so I end up with an answer that's 10,500. That's right. Oh, you want a comma in there? There you go. You don't have to put it there, but just because you asked, 10,500 and done. All right, so this is the answer. Yeah, just like that. Let's move on. That was problem number 10. In problem number 11, we have 5 and 67 hundredths times 10 to the negative fifth power. So I know I'm starting with my first factor, which is 5 and 67 hundredths. And my map tells me, my map back to standard notation, tells me to move the decimal five places to the left. So that's what I'll do. I'll move the decimal one, two, three, four, five places to the left here. And so here I have my decimal and I'm going to place zeros in these little cup holders here. There you go. Those are my little cup holders. So therefore, my answer is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my answer now is going to be 567 10 millionths. That's the result, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number 11. And here comes your red box. Done and done, sign. Problem number 12 here. We have six and 893 thousandths times 10 to the seventh power. We want to convert this into standard notation, which means I'll be starting with that first factor of six and 893 thousandths, and I'll be moving that decimal seven places to the right. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to move the decimal to the right. And in each of these cup holders here, let's go ahead and pull a zero. There you go. Put in a zero there so that I end up with six, eight, nine, three, zero, 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 zero. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be 68,930,000. Yeah, that's the answer. Just like that. Let's go ahead and put a box around it. That's right. Gift wrapping it and done. That's problem number 12, ladies and gentlemen. We're moving on to the next problem now. 
In problem number 13, we're going to be multiplying scientific notation. Now, what you should know, ladies and gentlemen, is that anytime you're multiplying numbers that are in scientific notation, all you have to do is multiply the first factors together, mm -hmm, and then you're going to multiply your basis of 10 together. That's right. So when I multiply 8 times 1 and 2 tenths, I end up with 9 and 6 tenths. Yep. And then multiplying 10 to the ninth power times 10 to the negative fifth power, because I have like bases, all you have to do is add the exponents together. So 9 plus negative 5, or 9 minus 5, is going to give you 10 to the fourth power, which is going to be the result. That's your answer. Notice how my first factor is a number between 1 and 10, and my second factor is in base 10 raised to an integer. So there we have it. That's scientific notation. That's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to put a box around this now. After I put my equal sign that I forgot. So here we are. That is problem number 13. And we're on to the next problem. In problem 14, ladies and gentlemen, we have 3 and 2 tenths times 10 to the negative 17th power times 5 times 10 to the negative 2 power. Once again, since I'm multiplying scientific notation, I multiply the first factors together, and then I multiply my base tens. Multiplying 3 and 2 tenths times 5, you'll end up with 16. Then, multiplying 10 to the negative 17th power times 10 to the negative 2 power, you're going to add these exponents together. That's right, like signs add. So you'll have 10 to the negative 19th power, like so. All right. However, this is not your answer in scientific notation. That's right. Notice that your first factor is not a number between 1 and 10. All right? That number 16 is more than 10. And you can have a value that's greater than 10, all right, in scientific notation. Therefore, this is what you'll do. You're going to move this decimal one place to the left, all right, so that you can write the first factor as 1 and 6 tenths. And since I moved that decimal one place to the left, I need to tell the reader that in order to put it back, you need to move it one place to the right. So combining negative 19 plus 1 will give you 10 to the negative 18th power, and this is your answer in scientific notation. Notice that now my first factor is a number between 1 and 10, including 1, by the way. All right, so that's my answer now. So because we ended up multiplying with a number that was greater than 10, we had to move our decimal in order to comply with scientific notation. Okay, so there we have it. That's the answer. Red boxing it. Okay, on to the next problem. In problem number 15, we have 4 and 5 tenths times 10 to the 6th power divided by 1 and 5 tenths times 10 to the 12th power. Here we have two numbers in scientific notation that are dividing. Remember, every fraction is a division problem. So what you're expected to do is divide your first factors together and then divide the second factors, okay? So this one won't be too bad. I do know that 4 and 5 tenths divided by 1 and 5 tenths is it's three. It's just three. So you can actually ignore those decimals in this situation and say that's 45 divided by 15, and that gives you a value of three. Mm -hmm. Then, anytime you're dividing like bases, you need to subtract the exponents. So I'll have my base 10 here, and then 6 minus 12 is going to give me negative 6, which is the answer. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we roll around here. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and box it up. Red box done. That was problem number 15. Let's look at our last problem here. Problem number 16 is coming up. In problem number 16, we're going to start out by dividing the first factors, and then we'll divide those last factors together. So, 4 divided by 5 is going to be 8 tenths. All right? Then, subtracting my exponents here, negative 9 minus 16 will give me negative 25 as an exponent, as a result. So what you want to do now is analyze whether or not your result here is in scientific notation. In other words, is my first factor a number between 1 and 10, including 1? And is my second factor a power of 10? Well, no, it's not. The first factor is not a number between 1 and 10. So that means we need to take another step in order to get our answer. We'll need to move this decimal one place to the right. So since I moved that decimal one place to the right, I need to tell the reader in order to put it back the way it was, move the decimal one place to the left. So I'll end up with 8 times 10 to the negative 26th power. And this is the answer in scientific notation for problem number 16. 
done and done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so this is our lesson for scientific notation. As always, please rate, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And if you're able, please donate because that helps us bring you more free math tutorials from me, Mr. Witt, and Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's mathematic presentations. Did you learn anything? Do you need to review your notes? Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself. I am learning mathematicals.